Hey y'all, welcome back. Today we're going to power up the power supply and make sure that everything's working like it should before we move on to other parts of the project. I can't emphasize enough that these are lethal voltages. You do not want to be distracted while you're working on this stuff by having kids around or pets or, you know, anybody that can bother you, make sure that you tell your partner or whoever may be in the house with you to not bother you while you're working on this part because one mistake, you turn around or your hand slips and goes into the wrong pins and you could end up being the last thing you ever touch. Please watch the safety video that I've linked in the description. Watch other videos. Read up. That's not the end-all be-all to safety. Right now I have this wired up with a dim bulb, a isolation transformer, and a variac. And I've already tested this, so I'm just showing you the test process. But I highly recommend that you get a Variac if you're going to be working with two stuff. Because unloaded without the output tubes being in the circuit, the B plus is going to go higher than this capacitor is rated for. So if you just plug this thing into a wall with the rectifier tube in and no other tubes, it'll probably explode this capacitor. If you don't have a Variac, this needs to be a minimum of a 500 volt capacitor and even then, not sure that's high enough. So, get one of these. And back to the lethal voltages thing, this is probably the part of videoing these builds that scares me the most because I know this is lethal voltage and it's so easy to get distracted by looking at my monitor to make sure the video is recording right or that I'm not blocking the view of something. And I don't want to end up videotaping me dying from working on one of these amps. So if I make a couple of mistakes here or misspeak or something, you'll have to excuse me because I am trying to focus on what I'm doing and not end up dead on the video. First thing you want to do is I go ahead and pull all these extraneous wires through these holes in the back of the chassis where the speaker jacks are going to be just to get them all out of the way. The first thing we're going to do is power it up with no rectifier tube in it and we want to check to make sure that as you can see it's not plugged in yet and hasn't been yet that we have voltage here on the high voltage of the rectifier tube, we have our 5 volts here on the heater of the rectifier tube, and that we have 6.3 volts over here on all the heaters for the other tubes. So we want to ver verify that our AC is working first. So here's my, my voltmeter. We put it on AC. Let's see if I can get this with a there we go. And I highly recommend using just clip-on leads for doing this initial test. That way you don't have to like hold the probes on things, especially the, the really high voltage that's going to be across these two pins of the high voltage rectifier. And basically I just want to see that we're getting voltage there and that it looks reasonable, I'm probably not going to turn it all the way up and have 750 volts or something across there. But I just want to make sure that we're getting high voltage across those two pins. So, very X turned down. It's turned off. Plug this in. Turn the very X on. And then we start bringing our voltage up. And you can see even 30 volts in, we got 250 volts across there. So let's pull it up. There's 500 volts. I don't want to push what this um, digital meter might be able to handle voltage-wise. And so 
We know we're getting high voltage there. That's all we need to see. So the next thing we want to do is very carefully move it over to these 5 volt pins. And again, as you see, I'm always working with just one hand and I have the other hand behind my back. I'm wearing rubber soled shoes. I'm making sure that no, no other part of my body is touching anything metal that could be grounded. And you, what you don't want is to have the current go from one hand to the other because it'll go right across your heart and that's what'll kill you. So we're gonna pull this up. And I know where 5 volts is on this trans, or what 20 volts is on this transformer, and there's 5 volts. It's 5.1. Once we get the tube in there and get some load on the windings, we'll be right at 5 volts. Now we can come over here, put one connector on that terminal, the other one on this terminal, and there's one 19.1. Like I said, I have 120 volts marked on my Variac, which is like right there, and there's one, there's 120 volts. The other thing I want to mention too, this Variac's made in China, and I don't know if you can read this, but it says input 130 volts. 50 to 60 hertz, which is what China is. We're 120 volts here. So if you plug this into 120 volts, none of these markings around here are going to be relevant. Neither is the little meter that's on the front. So I use a 12 volt bucking transformer to drop the input voltage down to 110 volts you know, in front of this Variac so that this knob actually is really close to the voltage that we're seeing. So that's a good tip if you're going to, you know, use one of these cheaper made in China Variacs. These are just a little over $100. So you need to set up a bucking transformer to make sure that the input voltage is 110 volts. Okay, next thing we want to check is to make sure that our heater wiring is 6.3 volts or close to it. Now, it's going to be high because there's no tubes in it to pull down the voltage. And I'm expecting, yeah, there's 6.5 volts. Now, that'll probably come down to 6.3-ish once we get the load of these tubes in the sockets, but we can check that and see if that's, you know, what it is or not. But we know we're close enough where we're not going to blow up any tubes by putting them in the sockets and checking them. So the next thing we want to do is to power off the amp. We're going to unplug it and then we shouldn't have any voltage here because we didn't have the rectifier tube in, but I never assume anything. So we're going to check across the B plus rail and we in fact have nothing so the amp's safe to work in. Let's go ahead and check the B plus next. That's it. That's an easy thing to do. So I'm going to pop in the rectifier tube. And this time we're going to have DC on the B plus rail. The other thing I want to show you in this video is the value of having a indirectly heated rectifier tube instead of using a solid state rectification like using diodes or 
some kind of bridge rectifier for your B plus is that the B plus comes up very slowly. And the advantage to that on a tube amp is when you click on the power switch, the heaters instantly get 6.3 volts. And it gives the heaters in the tube a big head start on getting warmed up before you put B plus to the output tubes. And that way you the tubes are ready to conduct that B plus when it ramps up and it's not instantly being hit with 400 plus volts and then the heater is coming up and the tube sitting there with all that high voltage on it with nowhere to go. Plus if you have that situation then with these tubes not being able to conduct current the B plus could skyrocket up to close to 500 volts before these tubes start conducting and it will blow up this capacitor unless you rate it high enough to deal with that situation. And obviously a 500 volt cap, you get more expensive, they get larger, they get harder to find a place to put them even though we do have room here, it would still be, we'd have to do a little gymnastics to get the wiring to it. So. Anyway, just some thoughts and some advantages to using tube rectification. So we're going to turn on the VARIAC and I tested this earlier coming up slowly. You want to you know, start out by putting it on maybe 65 volts and see what you get. But I want to show you how long it takes for the B plus to come up. Go ahead and putting this instantly at 120 volts in. So we're just going to click it on like we were turning on the amp. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten seconds before we even start seeing voltage. And as you can see, it ran right past 450 volts. And these caps do have like a surge voltage of 500 volts, but you can't leave them there. And, but as we can, for turning this up to like 115 volts, we're going past 450 volts unloaded. So again, if you don't have a Variac, either be ready to instantly turn this off once you see it going past 400 volts, or use a higher rated cap. And like I said, I I'm not going to test it here, but it may well go over 500 volts with no load on it. So we've tested that. We know our rectifier tube's working. We know we're getting our B+. The other thing I want to show you here is turn this off, unplug it. We got no power going into the amp. Even with that bleeder resistor, we still got over 300 volts in this amplifier with it unplugged. And 10 seconds later, we still got 300 volts. Understand that just because you've turned the power off or you've unplugged one of these tube amplifiers doesn't mean it's safe to like go in there and start poking around. As you can see right there, that's still enough voltage to probably kill you if you stuck your fingers across it. So again, be careful guys. Understand that these things are dangerous to work on if you're not paying attention. This is also showing you the value of having this bleeder resistor in here that we put down here. That without that, it would still be sitting up over 400 volts. And it might take, you know, 45 minutes or an hour for the voltage to come down to a safe level. So before we do anything else with the amp, I'm going to go ahead and let the voltage come down and... 
I'm going to edit this out and we'll come back when we're ready to put the main, all the rest of the tubes in and see if we have heaters glowing to make sure that we have the right pins connected to the 6.3 volt heaters. Once we've done that, we know the power supply is working like it's supposed to. Okay, for the next part of the video, we're going to be testing the, to make sure we have the heaters wired up right in these tubes. And I've tried to get the lighting where we've got light on this side and this side's kind of dark so we can see the tubes glowing. And so we want to plug in the amp. And for this test, we have the rectifier removed because we don't want to spike the B plus with no load on that part of the circuit yet. But we do want to put 120 volts on the Viriac, which let me see if, if you can see, I got a little mark scribed here. That's 120 volts. So I've got it on 120 volts and I'm going to power this thing up and watch the heater voltages. and make sure that all the tubes are glowing. And let me turn this light off a second so maybe you can see better, but we can see all four of the tubes, the heaters are glowing. So we got our two 6SQ7s and our two EL34s, and as you can see, all four of the heaters have their little elements glowing. Let's see if I can tilt this one up where you can see that back too, but you can see it's glowing too. So we know we have the heaters wired up correctly and we're right at 6.3 volts, which is, you know, exactly what we want to see is the tubes warm up, the current draw across the heaters comes down. And that's why you were seeing it first it was like closer to 6.15 or so, and now it's slowly easing up towards 6.3. And I have a feeling when we, once the tubes are fully warmed up, we're going to be right at 6.3 volts, but this is fine. Anything within, it's actually within 10%, which I think is a little wide of a range, but I'm fine with anything from 6 volts to 6.5 volts. Doesn't bother me. I would rather see more like 6.1 to 6.5. But anywhere in that range is going to work fine. But obviously if we can get it that close to 6.3 volts, we're killing it. So we're ready to move forward. We know the power supply is working like we're supposed to. Probably the next thing we want to get into is working on... Wiring up the power switch, it came in, and I think it's going to look awesome. Power switches look like this, which I think is going to look really great. That's like a uh, kind of a black chrome. And the little ring around the outside uh, glows an amber color. And so we're going to wire that up. Going to install this little small... Um, bridge rectifier to get our DC to run the LED. I know some people just run AC to them, but I like running DC to them. And we're going to power this up off the 6.3 volt heater windings. And it also then shows us that if this indicator lights on, that we have our heater voltage. So that's kind of a cool thing too. So I hope you're enjoying this series. If you are, please sub to the channel like the video, and we'll see you soon for more 6SQ7 fun. Have a great day.